Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we are discussing the spectacular Corum Golden Bridge Automatic. This is a watch that was originally launched back in 1980 as the Golden Bridge, the solid gold baguette movement manually wound designed by independent watchmaking great Vincent Calabresi. He peddled it to many brands, none of which were interested at the height of the quartz crisis, except for Corum of La Chaux de Fonds, which had a fascination in retaining mechanical watchmaking for the upper segments of the market. Well, in 2011, Corum debuted what you see here, which is the bumper automatic winding version of the Golden Bridge. Rose gold case, rose gold baguette movement. This is a 500 piece limited edition and it's fairly easy to wear in its distinctive tonneau case. 37 millimeters wide, that is from side to side. It's 13.9 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. 51.7 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. It is prominent, but it sits fairly easily. You can see on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, large but the lugs are slightly inboard of each side of my wrist. So I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist my size or larger. So 16 centimeters circumference and up. And although the case flank looks fairly sheer, it has a little bit of a curvature to its outer lip so that sleeves can and will slide over the side of this watch. It is a dress watch after all, though not necessarily the kind of watch you want to disappear underneath the cuff. Move my arm away, get a better sense of the watch in proportion to the rest of my arm and my hand. It's a good looking piece with a lovely prismatic case design. Taking a look at the strap, you can see it is medium rectangular scale alligator leather, dark brown, semi-gloss. There's a little bit of bolstering to add volume. If you look at the edge, you could see that it is a very narrow folded edge. It has a monotone stitch, calfskin on the bottom, no crimping, no gouging, a brand new Corum factory strap. And then you can see that the design of the buckle echoes the design of the case. You can see that character line that runs transversely on both the lugs and the buckle, as well as the curvature of the profile of the buckle itself. And as a feature I happen to love, which is an elevated bridge. So some buckles are relatively flat, but on others where the bridge is elevated over the two pins on the side, the strap will sit inside the buckle rather than stacking up underneath which makes for a much thinner profile when it's actually on the wrist. So that's what that design does for you there. Now, from every angle, you can appreciate this core movement. This is the CO3131. And you can see that it is very simple. On one end, we have a mainspring barrel. Let me try to get this thing to focus. On one end, we have a mainspring barrel. Then we have the multiplication system that reduces the torque but accelerates the speed and you can see those wheels running all the way to the escapement and the balance take note while the movement is stamped 1010 officially this is the quorum co3131 and you can see that it is a free sprung balance a very modern format there's also a platinum bumper that winds the watch. We'll talk more about that in a moment. By the way, you can see on the reverse side, individually numbered. The Golden Bridge was originally designed in yellow gold and manual wind, which meant you would manually wind a movement that had power at one end and an escapement and an oscillator at the other. And it is watchmaking in its simplest form. You can also see how it's tiered with the largest wheel, the barrel down at the base. And then we have the rest of the train shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until it reaches the escape wheel and then expands again and flares with the balance. Now you can see here we have rose gold polished and satinated faceted applique indices that actually work beautifully considering the depth and the degree of removal from the hands. It is quite easy to read this watch and perhaps you could see that best from this angle. It is the inverse of a bullhead winder as it features a crown between the lugs down at six o'clock. Uh, perish the thought, your dirty mind. I have no idea what that's called. I'm going to call it an inverse bullhead and we're just going to go with that. You could see that the dial base such as it is has an anthracite a uh, sort of a matte metallic finish with a brushed top to bottom directional graining. A little bit difficult to showcase because sometimes depth of field is lost in these videos, uh, but you can see it 
below those lovely applique indices. The movement itself features hands which are half frosted, so you can see how half of them frosted, half of them polished, make for better contrast. And then Corum beautifully decorates this movement, which again, I cannot overemphasize, is made of 18 karat solid gold. Long before F.P. Journe, long before companies like Genus, even companies that started doing gold movements in the 90s, like JLC. Corum was doing it in the 80s with the Golden Bridge. You could see that there's a great deal of different finish from satination to polish and mirrored beveling on the side. The screw heads themselves are also black polished. This movement, being an automatic winder, has a platinum hammer automatic system that winds a 40-hour power reserve. If you look carefully, you can see that the movement is very modern in design with a free-sprung balance and that fixed stud holder with all the adjustments done using variable inertia blocks on the balance itself. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour and it pivots on 26 joules, and then all this is water resistant down to 30 meters. This is Corum's masterpiece, and despite his immense career chocked with highlights, I believe this is the innovation for which Vincent Calabresi will be remembered, but it's a much more modern case design with viewports from every angle, and the presence of the Platinum Hammer Automatic makes this technically more interesting than the standard manual wind Golden Bridge. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. I'll wait, I got one more thing to show you, and I just spotted this because the bumper moved out of the way. Uh, in terms of who makes what where and for whom in the Swiss watch industry, there can be a lot of opacity, but to their credit, Corum left the logo of their supplier and engineering partner for this uh, automatic golden bridge mechanism right there on the bridge. Below the note that this is 18 karat solid gold, you can see the Vauche Manufacture Star logo. You'll see it on the movements of a million different watches made across the watch universe. What's different here is that clearly Vauche was brought in to convert the Corum Golden Bridge movement to automatic winding. They didn't build it from the ground up. So this automatic bumper system is the work of Corum in conjunction with Vauche, which was responsible for the engineering conversion of the age-old Calabrese manual winder to a modern bumper automatic. Very cool, and I'm glad I spotted that. Uh, guys, again, comments in the description below, but I think this modern sort of a tablissage is the very best and super cool.